Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Tamar Mohammed. Uh, I'm CEO uh, of uh, Aspect. Thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to share uh, the story of Aspect Biosystems. Our company is based in Vancouver, Canada, uh, and we're focused on using our advanced 3D printing technology for the creation of living human tissues uh, on demand. So our vision at Aspect to uh, enable the creation of human tissues on demand uh, builds off of very rapid advancements that we we're seeing in the areas of cell biology, uh, biomaterial science, bioengineering, uh, and tissue engineering. And our highly interdisciplinary team of uh, engineers, scientists, and clinicians have taken key concepts in the areas of uh, computer-aided design, microfluidics, 3D printing, and tissue engineering uh, to develop a broadly applicable uh, and microfluidics-based 3D printing technology that allows us to create tissues uh, for key applications in, in the discovery and development of novel therapeutics uh, through the creation of disease models, uh, as well as regenerative medicine through the creation of living tissue uh, therapeutics. So Aspect Biosystems uh, was uh, founded in 2014. We spun out of the University of British Columbia. Uh, this was through a collaboration between world-class research groups uh, in engineering and medicine. Uh, and since we've spun out, we've hit several key commercial milestones. We've uh, entered into strategic partnerships with top pharmaceutical and biotech uh, firms. We've brought in uh, smart venture capital to fuel our growth uh, and development. Uh, and we've assembled a, a truly world-class and interdisciplinary team of scientists, engineers, uh, and business professionals professionals that are uh, wholeheartedly committed to making a meaningful impact on medical research uh, and practice. Uh, so together with our partners around the world, uh, we're developing key applications of our technology, including knee meniscus tissue for surgical therapy, uh, pancreatic tissue for the treatment of type 1 diabetes, uh, as well as muscle tissue and liver tissue, initially for drug testing purposes, but ultimately with line of sight towards uh, regenerative medicine. So Aspect Biosystems is focused on developing and commercializing its 3D printing technology uh, that is capable of transforming 3D computer models uh, into real living uh, tissue structures. At the very core uh, of our platform technology is our printhead. Uh, so our printhead is a microfluidic device uh, that allows us to take multiple different uh, biologically relevant materials. And so these are cells uh, loaded in biomaterials. Uh, we've labeled them different colors here, but these would represent different biological inputs, such as cells loaded in biomaterials, extracellular matrix content, different uh, bioactive compounds. These biologically relevant materials are rapidly dispensed layer by layer to construct these multicellular complex structures. Uh, now these structures are living, they contain real living cells. And so after we print these structures, uh, they are put into physiological environments. Uh, and throughout this process, the cells begin to form these networks and, and ultimately uh, these, these tissues demonstrate uh, physiologically and, and commercially relevant function. Uh, and so in this particular example, you could see our printed airway muscle tissues actually contracting and relaxing in response to therapeutically relevant agents. Uh, so we have a bold vision at Aspect to ultimately enable the creation of living human tissues uh, on demand. <clears throat> at the very core uh, of our company is our platform uh, technology. Uh, this is a microfluidic based approach to 3D printing. Uh, we were the first and only group uh, in, in the world to marry microfluidics with uh, 3D printing. What this allows us to do is to uh, integrate, process, and dispense uh, multiple cell loaded biomaterials to create uh, multicellular, multifunctional uh, living tissue uh, therapeutics. To fully unlock uh, the uh, broad applicability uh, of our platform technology, a key focus of ours uh, at Aspect Biosystems uh, includes working very closely with academic researchers uh, around the world. This is done through our academic discovery ecosystem. What this involves is providing access to our 3D printing platforms uh, to researchers who are focused on different applications. Uh, we generate revenue through this process by providing access to our platform, as well as generating recurring revenue through the supply of our microfluidic chips uh, but very importantly, we have the optionality to in-license any tissues that are developed using our platform. And so we're creating an innovation pipeline uh, to the company where researchers around the world are focused on applications ranging from patient-specific neural tissue to developing a blood-brain barrier model to kidney tissue. So it really allows us to look beyond just our internal uh, pipeline. 
Uh, in addition to our academic collaborations, we work very closely with uh, our commercial partners, and so these are uh, biotech, pharma, medtech, uh, and, and advanced material companies where we co-develop specific tissue products and bring them to market. And so these are tissue products in the drug development space through the creation of disease models, uh, and increasingly we're, we're focusing more on regenerative medicine where we're producing tissues for uh, transplantation. Internally in the company, we're advancing four uh, tissue programs. This includes uh, both proprietary uh, programs as well as partnered uh, programs. And so the four programs of focus are knee meniscus tissue for transplantation, uh, muscle tissue, uh, and liver tissue. Uh, those two programs are focused on disease modeling for drug discovery, uh, as well as pancreatic tissue for uh, the treatment of type 1 uh, diabetes. Uh, so uh, these programs are the ones that we are advancing forward uh, as a company. We also have our discovery ecosystem that is uh, fueling uh, our company with long-term uh, innovation. Uh, and our ultimate goal is to bring these tissues to market, uh, working with our commercial uh, partners. So an example of one of the tissues that we are using for uh, drug development purposes and have partnered this, uh, this tissue with uh, multiple groups and pharmaceutical companies around the world is our 3D printed uh, airway smooth muscle tissue. So this is a, a tubular uh, construct about five millimeters in diameter uh, and a couple of millimeters high and it's printed using primary airway uh, smooth muscle cells. So we printed these structures, it, it's a very fast process, it takes about a minute to print each one of these samples. Uh, we show that the cells are viable uh, using the micro printing uh, approach uh, and the cells are viable long-term in culture and, and, and the tissues are stable for long periods of time but ultimately to show that these tissues uh, are, are functional we take compounds with known effects in vivo and we dose our tissues with these compounds when you look at the response so in this case we took histamine uh, which is released during an asthma attack in, in the body and causes the muscle tissue that wraps around our airways to contract reducing airflow and causing asthma patients to have trouble breathing we took that very same compound uh, and we're able to show as we increase the concentration of histamine, we get this dose-dependent contraction that we can measure. We then took salbutamol, uh, a beta-2 agonist, a common anti-asthma therapeutic, and we're able to show that we get this dose-dependent relaxation. So we're able to show that using this tissue, we can get uh, physiologically and pharmacologically relevant uh, responses uh, to, to these, these drugs uh, and compounds, and we are actively partnering with, with pharmaceutical companies around the world uh, on, on this tissue as well as, uh, as, well as others. But this is a, an example of how we can use our tissues uh, to, to study disease and to develop novel uh, therapeutics with our pharmaceutical partners. Uh, our most recent partnership that we announced uh, is with JSR. Uh, JSR are a uh, Japanese uh, multinational chemical company, and so we've joined forces with JSR. Uh, they are bringing their advanced materials uh, uh, background to, to uh, our team, and, and we're combining that with our capacity uh, to print living biological structures using our technology and, and working with, uh, with our team and, 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 and our counterparts at JSR. And so our focus is to develop a vascularized uh, liver uh, lobule. Uh, Initially, the goal is to create uh, a drug testing platform for detecting drug-induced uh, liver injury, one of the most common reasons for, for drug withdrawals, but ultimately we plan on using uh, this technology and our learnings uh, and working closely with our partners to develop a regenerative medicine uh, liver, uh, liver transplantable patch. Uh, and we're very encouraged to see the uh, fast track uh, regulatory policies introduced in Japan where our partners uh, are headquartered. Our first uh, regenerative medicine program that, that we launched is a focus on uh, generating a knee meniscus tissue implant. Uh, so the knee meniscus is one of the most commonly damaged parts of the knee. Uh, and to make matters worse, uh, once a damage occurs, it just gets worse as worse uh, as time uh, goes uh, by. Uh, current surgical interventions include uh, meniscectomies, where a surgeon goes in to try to remove the damaged part, or in some extreme cases, they remove the entire meniscus, which could alleviate the acute pain Pain, but often introduces uh, arthritis uh, in, in the knee. And so there's really no good solution here, and so we launched the program uh, with, with Johnson & Johnson to develop um, a knee meniscus tissue implant uh, that would be patient-specific. So our vision behind this program is uh, ultimately a patient that is suffering from uh, degenerative meniscus uh, or a torn meniscus would, would go to the hospital. We take a scan uh, of their knee. We'd get the custom geometry. Uh, we then take a sample of cells uh, from uh, their body. Uh, we would have the custom content and the custom geometry. Uh, and then using our microfluidic technology, we would recreate the structural and compositional heterogeneity uh, that is so crucial uh, in, in providing the overall biomechanical function uh, of of, of this meniscus uh, tissue. 
Uh, we would then take uh, this uh, patient-specific meniscus tissue, uh, implant it into the patient, and they would be on their path uh, to recovery. So looking at uh, most cases of meniscus injury, we see that uh, uh, mostly the, the damage is in the interior avascular zone with most patients having an intact uh, vascularized periphery. Uh, and so our strategy uh, for this program is to uh, replace only the damaged uh, tissue. And so our first generation uh, knee meniscus tissue implant will be a, a partial uh, and permanent knee meniscal uh, implant that would include bioactive features and will rely on cell engraftment in vivo um, uh, to, to allow for the cells to uh, engraft uh, into that tissue for uh, accelerated clinical uh, and commercial adoption. So to date, we've shown uh, appropriate biomechanical function and, and suitability for surgical implantation, and the next stages of development include uh, moving into large animal studies to show safety and, and efficacy uh, in preventing uh, osteoarthritis. Our second therapeutic tissue uh, opportunity that we're pursuing is a 3D printed pancreatic uh, tissue patch uh, for the treatment of type 1 diabetes, an autoimmune disease that involves uh, targeting uh, and killing the insulin producing beta cells uh, in, in the body, uh, resulting in uncontrolled glucose uh, levels in, in, in the blood and significant morbidity and reduced uh, lifespan. Uh, current standard of care uh, includes uh, insulin injections, which is difficult to control and manage. Uh, insulin pumps uh, are not nearly as responsive as insulin producing beta cells and often have to be recharged and refilled. Uh, cell therapy has shown a lot of uh, clinical success uh, through the direct transplantation of, of islets uh, via the Edmonton uh, uh, protocol. But, but these treatments uh, uh, are limited uh, in terms of the, the, the cell uh, supply. They rely on donor uh, cells. And, and patients who undergo this treatment have to uh, live a lifetime on immunosuppressive drugs. Uh, now, encapsulated approaches have shown uh, a lot of promise where uh, these insulin-producing beta cells are encapsulated in a device that shields them uh, from the immune uh, system. It allows for uh, glucose to diffuse into the device and insulin is released. Uh, but the cells within these environments are starved from uh, a uh, source of oxygen and, and nutrients, uh, creating ports that allow the vasculature to come uh, into these devices, um, uh, brings in the immune cells. And so we really see the issue of vascularization and immune protection being mutually exclusive. Uh, and so our solution to this problem aims at addressing this, this issue uh, head on. And so our strategy uh, involves uh, 3D printing uh, insulin producing beta cells from uh, stem cell derived sources into a structure uh, that allows access to uh, a, a, a blood supply, uh, but also protects them using an immunoprotective biomaterial. And so using our microfluidic technology, we could create what we call hollow uh, fibers with multiple different shells. Uh, in the core uh, of that fiber, we're able to perfuse blood. Uh, in the first shell, we use uh, an immunoprotective uh, and permeable uh, bio material. In the second shell, uh, we include uh, or load that shell with our therapeutic cells, in this case, uh, the insulin-producing beta cells. And finally, in the last uh, and third shell, we include, again, uh, a permeable immunoprotective uh, biomaterial. So in this way, we, uh, we are attempting to break this mutual exclusivity that we're seeing with other macro encapsulation uh, devices. And so this is an example of how we are using engineering, our printing technology, combining and marrying that with biology to create a smart, living, uh, functional therapeutic device. Uh, we see this functional device as a platform in itself for uh, targeting other uh, disease indications, including uh, hemophilia and lysosomal uh, storage uh, diseases. Uh, and so this is our, our, our second uh, therapeutic uh, program uh, that we are advancing. Uh, we uh, uh, know that uh, printing human islets uh, are notoriously uh, very, very difficult. These are cells that are, are very sensitive, and so we've printed these cells and have shown uh, viability and function uh, and, uh, and are able to demonstrate that we could actually handle uh, these, these very sensitive cells. So last but certainly not least, uh, I'd like to thank our partners and our amazing team uh, at Aspect Biosystems. Uh, it's very easy for me uh, to stand here uh, in beautiful Barcelona and share our story and our progress, but really all of the hard work uh, is being done uh, at our uh, labs and our headquarters uh, in Vancouver. Uh, we've assembled a truly world-class team. These uh, include experienced uh, individuals that uh, we've attracted from Big Pharma, uh, as well as curious and, and smart scientists from around the world uh, that uh, are really operating at the cutting edge of science science, engineering, uh, and, and medicine to, to make a meaningful impact on, on medical research and practice. 
so thank you very much for listening to uh, the uh, story. I look forward to connecting with the existing friends and making new friends over the next uh, few days uh, and, and seeing how collectively we could, uh, we could move the uh, regenerative medicine field uh, further into the future. Thank you very much.